Hey, hey, let's talk about uh, Jeremy, Ron Jeremy. He was ordered to a mental health facility. He had a breakdown in his jail cell and he was supposed to go to a court hearing. And he was so mentally distraught that he was not able to, uh, you know, he to get out of his jail cell. Uh, you know, Jer Ron Jeremy was once known as a legend in the adult film entertainment world. If you're familiar with him, you know, um, he just turned 69 last week, and he's been locked up for uh, locked up for facing multiple charges of assault. And so um, he has been ordered to a mental health facility after suffering that alleged breakdown in his jail cell on Thursday, just minutes before his scheduled court hearing. Now, the purpose of his Los Angeles court appearance was to for Judge uh, George Lomeli's ruling about having his charges split up into 21 separate trials. You know how many, that's a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of time, a lot of same people showing up for each trial, um, for each accuser. Separate trials, one for each of his accusers. That's a lot, a lot of taxpayer money, a lot of time and energy. It's a lot to have the trial split up. Now, I've never heard of having that many trials split up because they usually will have them all come in. But I guess because it's so many, um, they want to have it split up and maybe they're going to schedule it at different times. So he's going to be going back and forth. Now, according to Daily Mail, Jeremy kept the judge waiting for 45 minutes before bailiffs re revealed they had issues getting the disgraced film star out of his jail cell. Now, they should have revealed that a lot sooner than 45 minutes. You know what I mean? If they were having trouble within the first 15 minutes or so, unless they have some procedure in place, they should have already let the court or the judge know that they were having trouble with Mr. Jeremy, uh, Ron Jeremy getting out of his jail cell. Now, um, they said the disgrace film story. You know, they always give the media and these writers, these journalists, they always give people, put something in front of their name. They're calling him the disgrace film star. Just like they call R. Kelly, you know, the disgraced R&B singer. And I think that's wrong. Stop calling people that. Just call them by their name, address them as their name. Their birth certificates don't say disgraced on them. So stop calling people out their name like that. Because first of all, until people are supposed to be in, uh, presumed innocent until proven guilty by a jury or whatnot, trial jury. And the thing is, I believe R. Kelly is innocent. And from all the evidence and what's going on now, R. Kelly is innocent. So to put that label in front of his name, he's never going to be able to live that down. Once you put a label out there on people, that's what happens. Now, I'm not, you know, into the Ron Jeremy thing, but all of that, but it is what it is. He's still a human being. And um, to be putting disgrace in front of his name and anybody's name, I don't agree with that. Just call the people what their name is. Because once they go to trial, they may be found not guilty. And everybody that's contributed to uh, putting these negative labels uh, on people's names. Guess what? They can't recover from recover from what you all have done and the amount of money that they have lost. You know, through endorsements and music or whatever the case may be, films and all this. They can never recoup what they've lost because pu people sit there and put labels on people, and then when they find out that they're innocent, they never come back and apologize. Like Gail King. She's nowhere to be found when it comes to this appeal with R. Kelly and those text messages that was released by Alice Foster between her and her daughter, Asriel, where Alice Foster Perry was, you know, promoting and uh, trafficking, sex trafficking her daughter. She really was doing those things. And Gail King, she's just a bitter woman that, you know, her husband allegedly cheated on her. She's never gotten over it. So she has a biased opinion. But if you've been a victim of anything before, you have to learn from that, that you still can't be a biased person, especially in journalism. So, you know, it just really, you know, like ruffles my feathers. And I have to pray for these folks and pray, you know, not to, to turn the other way and say ugly stuff. But I am going to speak the truth when I try to give my commentary, whether it's the best commentary you heard or not, I'm still gonna give it. And I'd rather be as real as real, real talk and give this commentary. So I, I, I think that they need to stop putting names, labels on people. Lady, let these people go through their, their uh, you know, the judicial system, let them have their, their time. 
in court to face their accusers, but he's going to have 21, you know, uh, uh, the judge was trying to split up his, uh, his cases, those cases, excuse me, those charges and cases that's against him. And I can see where that would be, you know, definitely, you know, really emotional and mentally draining to where you could have a breakdown because you are dealing with 21 cases, court cases, hearings uh, that can, you know, that you would have to attend. So that is a lot. So Garford, uh, Gar Goldfarb reportedly stated his client couldn't recognize him. He said he tried to get his attention unsuccessfully. Goldfarb told the judge he was unable to determine who I was, is what he told the judge. And um, one bailiff told the court that Jeremy was incoherent and unable to follow orders. And that's all Judge Lomely needed to hear before ordering Jeremy to a mental health facility. He also referred the case to the Hollywood Mental Health Court with a hearing scheduled for April 1st. Now, I don't know about any mental health facilities out there. They used to have one in, I think, was it um, Norwalk? I don't know if, or one out there. I don't know if it's still out there, but I know they have one in Patton, California, Patton State Hospital in Patton, California. It's next to a uh, well-known casino who just recently changed her name. And I don't recall the new name that the San Manuel Casino has, but there is a Patton State Hospital in Patton, California. And they keep, uh, you know, mental health uh, people there, inpatients there that have committed crimes. And so anyway, uh, you know, something to that effect out there at Patton State Hospital. So anyway, um, Judge Lomely has also ordered Jeremy's attorneys and prosecutors to hire mental health experts to give evaluations during a separate April 19th hearing in L.A. Criminal Court. And in August, Jeremy was indicted on more than 30 counts of sexual assault. The charges involved 21 victims and date back more than two decades. That's a long time, two decades. And that's what we're talking about is some of these victims or maybe quite a few of them have come during the Me Too movement era and, you know, came, you know, came out. And I think that it's important, again, that if you are a real victim and you have been victimized and assaulted, you know, it is important to contact the police department right away. Go to the nearest emergency room, you know, do those things, make a police report. Don't wait decades. Don't wait until you have a Me Too movement that that really is not here to help all women that are true victims. Um, they refuse to help, uh, you know, Charlemagne, Charlemagne's uh, victim. They refuse. So, and there's probably other ones out there too that they're refusing to help, but they're about money, you know, and, and they're about bringing down rich men. Uh, that's what they do. And so if it's not gonna profit them anything, they won't help you as a victim. And so it's really sad that the Me Too movement is supposed to be about helping people, but they have shown their hand over and over that they're not. And so you have women coming out, you know, uh, after decades, you know, and uh, bringing charges. And if that's the case and you're a real victim, I will have again, for victims that are real victims that are afraid to come forward, you can call a hotline and I'll put that, I'll mention that at the end of this video, at the, the end of the commentary. But however, if you are a real victim, please get the help you need. Don't sit back and wait decades. And if you are not a real victim and you're just saying this to get money, that's a problem, shame on you. And you know, your short term, your success with any money you may recover or whatever is gonna it's not gonna last. It's short term. So you know we we want to make sure that you know uh, if you are a real victim that you get that help. That we encourage you to go get the help. And we are sorry if you've been through anything you know um, that have harmed you against your will. And for the fake victims, stop it. We cannot feel sorry for fake victims. And we just seen some recently. Uh, with the Chris Brown thing, and it's probably fake with the Snoop Dogg too. It's a lot of that going on, even with the R. Kelly thing. There are women that know darn well that R. Kelly did not, you know, force you or coerce you and entice you against your will, and you still wanting to paint that picture, and it's really sad. But everything will be revealed in due time because God does reveal things. He continues to do that, and I thank God that I serve a mighty God that always reveals the truth. 
And that's what we have to seek is the truth. In all circumstances, seek the truth. And it's not your truth, my truth, and a truth. It is the truth. And God will put out and expose the truth where the way it's supposed to be. And he's constantly revealing things. So let's get to Jeremy again, whose real name is Ron Jeremy Hyatt. Pleaded not guilty to the counts. He's been held on a 6.6 million bail at the Twin Towers jail in Los Angeles since his June 2020 arrest until now. That's a really, really high bail. 6.6 million um, is real high. So they are thinking, obviously, that something he did, you know, and I know that in indictments are not doesn't always lead to convictions. And we need to understand that, too. Now, I don't know the history of Ron Jeremy Hyatt as his birth name, but Ron Jeremy, you know, as his, uh, you know, uh, what he did and who these, um, you know, uh, alleged, well, excuse me, who these accusers are. I don't know. And I'm not saying that he is innocent and I'm not saying he is guilty. But what I am going to say is that he is entitled to the presumptive of innocent, uh, just like everybody else. But unfortunately, when it comes to certain individuals or certain races, they have to prove their innocence in a court of law. They are guilty until proven innocent. Um, this man is in jail for a reason. I'm not sure what the reason may be. And if you get enough people to come after you to say things that may or may not be true, they're going to put you in jail. They will do it. And I thank God that Cosby is out and I'm praying. And I thank God that R. Kelly has the attorney that he has to do the work to, uh, you know, so he can be on his way walking out of, uh, you know, uh, being, uh, you know, incarcerated to be released. And so, Ron Jeremy, I hope that you didn't do these things. And if you did do them, then you have consequences to face. And uh, make better choices, Ryan Jeremy. But I can see still, you know, the uh, stress of going to a court hearing, knowing that there's uh, all these victims against you, and you know that have filed complaints against you, and you have uh, are facing 21 court cases or hearings. That is definitely a lot. So, um, you know, here it is. And Ron, we hope you get the mental health that you need because. Inmates, you know, have rights also. And so the judge made sure that he jumped on that right away. So I guess he won't be held into some type of craziness with his own, you know, uh, reputation and, and uh, you know, career. You know, we have to do the right thing and we cannot violate people's rights just because we believe that they are guilty of something and they've been indicted and they are being held. We cannot violate inmates rights and a lot of times inmates rights are violated because they a lot of people are biased and want to believe certain things even when they haven't been proved proven guilty yet uh you know in a court of law so it's good that they gave him they're giving him the the help that he needs and um it's unfortunate because not every inmate or someone that's been indicted or accused is treated fairly and we saw that so much and we still, you know, we saw it so much with the R. Kelly case and how they still refuse, you know, to release him. But yet and still they are releasing other people on bond. Uh, you know, look at Jesse Smollett. He's been released on bond before he got to his breakdown. You see what I'm saying? Because I believe he probably would have had a breakdown up in there. They got him out of there. Uh, Ryan Jeremy is getting the help he's supposed to get, you know, being in there. They didn't say let him go. They just said get get him to where he needs to be to get the help he needs and bring in some mental health providers, which obviously is going to be on the court to make sure that that happens. Court costs, again, that's going to be a lot, you know, but if you're a real victim and you're a victim of his, you deserve, you know, your day in court and you deserve justice. And if you're not and you're just playing games and jumping on the bandwagon, then you need to stop with all of that and make sure that you all tell the truth on that stand. And as far as the judge, he sounds like a judge that will hold people accountable for perjury if he sees any of that going on. Uh, it doesn't talk about if they testified in front of a grand jury or not and how that went down, but they did choose to indict uh, Ron Jeremy. So if there's anything I don't know, leave it in the comments, you know, rate the video, subscribe to the channel if you are not a subscriber, and then share the video. You know, share the video, never know what someone's facing, and 
you know, everybody's entitled to get that, get mental health and, and good care, the care that they deserve while they're an in, uh, in, inmate, because you still have rights as an inmate. And um, it's unfortunate that everybody doesn't get to, uh, you know, doesn't get their rights, rights, you know, they are refused their rights, excuse me, uh, refused their rights, even though we all are entitled to those same rights as an inmate. You know, when you are an inmate, I've never been an inmate, but I see a lot of stories. I've wrote about, you know, uh, you know, incarceration and I've talked about it a lot on my channel. And I just think it's important that, you know, uh, we keep on speaking out about this and making sure everyone is treated, uh, you know, with respect and dignity and get what they need, even if they are an inmate, because they are still a human being. And it's a lot of men in jail right now that are really innocent, that have been convicted, but they're really innocent. So we should never ever assume that just because you in jail, that, excuse me, that person that's in jail uh, is always 100% guilty because they may be just 100% innocent. And we see that a lot because we see a lot of men have been released from jail, especially black men have been released because they were truly innocent and they was falsely accused. They the, There was evidence that was withheld and also uh, they overlooked it and they also used uh, laws that have been repealed. And also um, they try, they confused the jurors. It is so much that uh, the prosecutions do a lot of times to get convictions. And, the, and, and one of them too goes back to uh, discrimination and racism, you know? Uh, so black men and men get convicted a lot and it's black men mainly, get convicted and they shouldn't be convicted. Um, and so we have to keep speaking out. But for us, Ron, Jeremy, uh, hey, I hope you get better and be able to go to trial so you can make sure that if you are innocent, that because the trial is going to go on without you once this all this is cleared up, you the trial will go on without you, whether you there or not, Ron, Jeremy. So, you know, still hope you get better, though. I do hope that you get better. And if and if any of those women, their victims, I hope that they get the help they need, the mental help they need, uh, you know, because it um, definitely is um, something that, um, you know, that needs to happen when you have been through some things you need and you are not healing like you should. You definitely need to uh, get the help that you need. So here is I'm going to again uh, put down, uh, let you know about this, the victims. Uh, here it is again. Help is available. Speak with someone today. The National Sexual Assault Hotline is available 24 hours. Uh, the phone number is 1-800-656-4673. God bless you all on today. Bye.